Moving on, we are now come to the last part that we need to model for this gripper. It is called the finger. So basically, if you look at this, there's multiple ways of you, you approaching this design. And I'm going to only take one approach, and I feel it's the easiest approach, is I'm going to take this basic L shape and create and dimension this as my first sketch. So in Inventor, we still have the piston bottom, and we'll just simply click on the close, to close that file down. We'll start a new file, English, under the English tab, standard, inch, IPT, click on OK, and we begin. By using the line command, top left hand corner, we simply draw out the profile of that L shape. Just like that. Now what we can do is add some dimensions. And the first dimension I'll place is the width of this area here. Click on that line, drag the dimension out. I drew it at 0.222. We simply click on the dimension to edit it, and that should be 0.25. I will do the same at the lower end. And I can click on that dimension. I can enter the value or simply just click on the 0.25 and it automatically takes that value. So if that value ever changes, so will this. The next dimension I'm going to place is the, the distance from here to here. So I simply just click on this line, drag out the dimension, click to place the dimension, click on the dimension to edit the dimension, and this dimension should be 2.4. Click on the green button in the edit dimension window to accept it. And if it skews off a little bit, just simply use your wheel mouse to zoom out a little bit. The next dimension I'm going to place is this upper line here. We simply click on the line, move our mouse up, click the place of dimension, click on the dimension to edit it, and that dimension should be 1.65. Click the green arrow to accept it. Now, I want a round fillet here. I want this to be arced. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can do it here, or I can do it in my 3D view, but I'll do it here. We're going to use the fillet command. We simply choose the fillet command, and we enter the radius of point one three and we simply pick the two lines that we want to fill it and we are done I'm also going to place the two holes at this present time but I'm not going to use the hole I'm just going to use the circle command click on the circle command I'm going to use the center point of this arc because they are concentric and I'm simply going to draw a circle there and I'm simply notice my tracking allows me to track to the center of that circle and I simply click and place and just simply draw the other circle there. I'm now going to dimension the diameter of this circle and I'll edit that dimension by clicking on it. Should be 0.13. Click on the green check mark to accept. <clears throat> this circle as well is 0.13 so I'm simply going to use my constraint equals and I'm going to click on the first circle I dimension and then the second circle so that no matter what changes there will always be the same diameter. I now just need to place the distance from this circle to this edge so I click on my dimension tool again I pick the center point of the circle the vertical line drag my dimension up place the dimension and click on the dimension to edit it and I'll enter the value of 0.13. Click. I've now completed the sketch and so I make my way to the first the finished sketch button top right hand corner click on it. 
I am going to place this in a nice symmetric view by moving to my view cube and click on the little home icon. And I'm going to give it mass by doing a quick extrusion. And I need to define the profile and I want this profile, notice that the circles are not filled in. The distance of that extrusion is 0.25. I simply click on the OK button. I have completed the first portion of this finger. I'm going to continue and I'm just going to show the next portion here. I need to create this shape along here on the back of this rectangle, on the back of this L shape. So what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate using my free rotate tool. I'm just going to spin this around so I can see my back here. I right click select done to complete the free rotate then I'm going to use my view face tool and I'm going to pick that back face so I'm working in the plan view now you can you can try to sketch out this object here in terms of the angles and what have you but I I like this much simpler way but first we need to go through and get into sketch mode so make your way to the top left and say create sketch and pick that back face so you can sketch on that back face. I am simply going to place a rectangle and I'm going to just simply draw a rectangle and notice I'm not dead on the dimensions. I'm going to use my dimension tools to place this appropriately. The first dimension I'm going to place, I'm going to start by clicking the dimension tool and I'm going to dimension the top line to the bottom line I'm going to place the dimension off to the left. I'm, left, I'm going to left click on the dimension to edit dimension and that is 1.59. The next, the next item that I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension the width is simply clicking this left vertical and this right vertical and place the lower dimension down below and that should be, I'm going to click on that dimension and that should be 0.75. Now that that's placed, <clears throat> I'm going to place one more dimension, which is the distance between this left rectangular line and the inner side of this L-shaped object. Place that dimension up above, edit dimension to set it to 0.25. Finally, I am going to make sure that this line and this line always runs along the same axis. I'm going to use my collinear tool and I'm going to pick this bottom L shape and this lower rectangular line. And I've now placed it in position. I'm finished my sketching. So I simply make my way to the finish sketch tool and click on finish sketch. I am going to move this or turn this object into an isometric view here by simply clicking on the home icon in the view cubes top right hand corner of your drawing area <clears throat> i'm going i am now going to add mass by simply choosing the extrude tool and i'm going to select the rectangle now it's difficult for me to see where it's extruding in or out so i can flip and flip but i still can't make out if I'm doing it correctly. Actually I can. There it is. This is flipping away and this is flipping out. But if you can't tell, simply use your rotate tool while in the command and you can see that you are going the proper the proper direction for your extrusion. Right click to complete the free rotate command. The extrusion value is 0.25. Click on OK. We now have the basics of our our finger if we look at the working drawings these cuts here are also referred to as chamfers and there are two two diameters there or two values there's 0.13 from one side and 0.5 from the other side so we can use the 3d chamfer tool and by clicking on that we have different options where the distances are equal we can specify distance an angle or in this case we can specify two distances so the first distance I'm going to enter is 
And the second distance I'm going to enter is 0.5. Click on the edge button. Now what I need to select is this edge right here. And you notice that I get the appropriate chamfer cut. I click the apply and I've created a chamfer. I'm going to select this edge here. It's going the wrong way. So what I can do is simply just choose this flip button to rotate it the other way. Click apply and I'll pan up. Choose this edge here. Click apply and then I can rotate it or I can just move my mouse and you can see that how it's highlighting that edge even though I can't see it. And I'll flip it. Hit OK or apply. I'll cancel out of this and I've now created the finger. We'll go to the save button and we'll call it finger. Save.